In this video, we're going to make a sketch that bounces a ball around the graphics window. Before we even start, let me show you where we're going to end up. Here's the running program. It's just a little circle that bounces around on the screen. Anytime it hits one of the four walls, it bounces off and goes in the other direction. If I don't clear the background on every frame, then we can see the trail left behind by the bouncing ball. This is a really useful technique. You'll find yourself using a variation of this kind of bouncing behavior in all kinds of sketches. It's just a great little thing to have in your pocket that you can pull out any time. It's also a terrific demonstration of many of the principles that we've seen. So let's look at this program in detail. We'll look at every step along the way and go nice and slow. There's a little bit of geometry here, but nothing too bad and we will see the recipe for making this kind of an animation. Here's the basic strategy. We start with the ball somewhere, and then on every frame we move the ball until it hits one of the walls. Then we just change the direction of the ball. So now it bounces, it hits another wall, we change the direction, and so on. Every time it hits one of the walls, we just change direction of the ball. So how do we get this thing started? Here's our beginning setup, and I'm going to describe the ball with just a few variables. I'll start with the center of the ball, and I'm drawing a little black dot here in the center of the circle, just so we can locate the point. Here I'm going to call the center of the ball CX and CY, and I know I'm going to want these to be globals, so I start them with a capital letter. As usual, these are ridiculously short variable names. I really would prefer to call these circle center X and circle center Y, but I want to use my nice big font when I show you the code later on, and that would just take up the whole screen. So I'm going to just call them CX and CY to save a little bit of space. I also need to store the radius of the circle, and I'll call that CR, again with a capital C because I want it to be a global. On every frame, the circle moves. Let's assume it's moving to the right and down. The distance it moves to the right, I'll call SX, again a global, so a capital S, where here S stands for speed. And it also moves down, and I'll say it moves down by SY. So these are the number of pixels that the ball moves on every frame. To make the ball move, we just take the center X and add SX. That moves the ball right. Then we take center Y and we move SY. That moves the ball down. And now we have the new location of our ball. So let's just get this much working. Here's a nice new empty sketch. And we'll just get things started. I'll have a void set up and I'll say size 800 by 600 and I'll smooth things out. And then I want to have a draw. So I'll say void draw and we'll say background of 200 and now I have to draw my circle. And I don't quite know where it is yet, so I'm going to invent some global variables. Now this is always a chicken and egg problem. Do you declare the globals and use them, or use them and declare them? You kind of have to think about it both ways at the same time. I know that to draw this ellipse, it's going to be centered at the CX and CY, and it's going to use two times the circle radius. So I'll just use these variables and then I'll go up to the top and declare them. So we'll say we have a CX and a CY and a CR, and we need to give them some starting values. So let's just start it in the upper left corner, arbitrarily. And I don't know, CR equals 20 sounds good. All right, let's run this and make sure it's working right. Sure enough, we get a little circle. So I think I would like to give that a color. I've actually gone off and chosen a color for this already. So I'm just gonna read this off of my color picker. And then before I draw my ellipse, I'll call fill with disk color. Much nicer, let's run this. Great, now let's get the disk moving. And I know I'm going to wanna to add SX and SY, so let's create those variables. Float SX and SY. And I don't know how fast this thing should move, so I'm just gonna pick some numbers. Let's say one and a half pixels to the right and three and a half pixels down on every frame. Why not? So just before I draw my disk, I will say that CX is CX plus SX. 
and CY is CY plus SY. And now let's run this and the ball should move right and down. Beautiful. And of course it moves off the bottom of the screen right now. And to get it to not do that is the whole point of this exercise. So now let's look at what it takes to get this thing to bounce. Here's a typical frame. This is what we're doing inside of draw. We start with the circle in the orange position. We move it to the right and down. So I want to introduce a little visual shorthand and say that the circle in fact is moving to the right and down simultaneously. So this green arrow is the result of moving in X and Y. Now in the code, first I move to the right and then I move down. Of course, it doesn't matter which way we go. We can move right and down or down and right. We still end up in the same place. So let's look at a few frames. This is where we are at the start of draw. So we add X and Y to the center. We draw the new ball and we're done. Now we have a new frame. We get X and Y back. We add them to the center. We have a new center for the circle. We draw it there and we're done. Now comes the interesting frame. We grab our X and Y, we add them to the center, and uh-oh, we have a problem. We need to bounce. So what should we do? Well, we can, of course, do anything. This is really, first of all, a design problem. What would we like to have happen? We could have the ball just turn around and come right back the way it entered. We could have it bounce off in some random direction. We can make it do anything we want. We could make the ball turn into an elephant. I mean, we can do anything we want. But I'm going to go after the simple solution, which is to pretend that this is like a ball that's bouncing on the floor. It's just going to hit the ground and come back up to the right. So let's look at the last few frames to get an idea for what's going on. This is the path that the ball has been following. And when it hits the ground, it bounces up and to the right. We can see that the motion it takes towards the right on every frame is constant, but when it bounces, the motion it's moving vertically flips. Instead of moving down, it's moving up. So let's find the new location of the ball after the bounce. So here's our ball, and this is where we want the ball to go. We want it to move to the right just as much as it was before, but now it moves up instead of down. Well, we can find this easily. All we have to do is to grab the Y value, the direction by which it's moving down, and flip it around. So now it's moving up by the very same amount. If we add the red SY to the location of the ball, we'll get our new location. So here's the new SX and SY we want to add. And if we draw our lines to show us where things are going, sure enough, there's our green line and the ball moves to the right place. And it looks like it has bounced. And this will be our strategy for all four walls. We just bounce off of the wall. So this is our design. This is what we want to have happen. Let's now look at the mechanics for it. Let's begin with the code we have so far. Now this is the code we just wrote. I've left out setup because we know what it does. It creates the graphics window and smooths, and it sets up initial values for all of these variables. We have our five global floats, CX, CY, and CR. They give us the disk's center and radius. And SX and SY, they tell us how much we're moving on every frame. In draw, we add SX and SY to CX and CY respectively, moving the ball horizontally and vertically. We fill and we draw an ellipse. In this version of draw, I'm not drawing the background every frame, so the ball would leave a trail. If we didn't want the trail, we would just stick in a call to background at the top of draw. Okay, so if entering this routine, the ball is currently where the orange circle is located, then this is where it's going to go when we draw it. So we add the X value to the center, we add the Y value to the center, and we draw the orange circle. And we're done. Then draw gets called again. So we repeat the procedure. We add to X and Y, and we draw the circle in a new location. And we're done. Then draw gets called again. And now things get interesting. If we add X and Y, this is where we are. We're off the bottom of the screen. So how can we catch this and what do we do? We'll answer those questions starting in part two.